Let's take a further look at the state of Gauteng hospitals with BADA's clinical head of surgery, Professor Martin Smith. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon, Professor. We do appreciate it. I'm not sure if you were able to hear that report by uh, Linda Guklek Kulu. We also tried to get the CFO of Gauteng Health onto the program, but she said that she was unavailable. It would have been great to get more clarity on the matter. But uh, maybe you should tell us the challenges you are facing as head of surgery at one of the biggest hospitals in the country. Tell us what it's like and what you face on a daily basis. Yeah, thank you, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to these issues. I think that we currently are going through a very difficult time in the hospital, and I think there are a number of reasons. Many of them are well known uh, currently. But I think the big challenge we're facing is that we have a historical shortage of, uh, of a budget to allocate to staffing. And while we've made... Uh, motivations and we've made representation for many many years asking for the hospital's budget for staffing uh, to be addressed our staff establishment to be adequately um, adequately uh, uh, provided so that the needs of the hospital can be met so in addition to a historical uh, uh, staff establishment that doesn't meet the needs the current challenges we face because of the fire at Charlotte Macheke Academic Hospital have aggravated it, particularly in the surgical environment, because there are only two major trauma centers in this region of Gauteng. One was at Charlotte and one was at Barra. And now that without the one at Charlotte, the one at Barra is facing extreme uh, challenges. Uh, the volume of work, the uh, severity of the injuries that we're seeing make it really difficult for us to manage, not just from a staffing point of view, from a range of different infrastructure, availability of operating theatres, availability of nurses to open more operating theatres. So the whole, the whole uh, landscape at the moment uh, remains currently very challenging. And in my view, it's all based on an inappropriate budget that has always been allocated to this hospital for it to be able to uh, meet the staffing needs to meet the burden of disease. Mm, I want us to get into some of the other issues we are facing, especially from our Gauteng hospitals. But I want us to focus on the issue that's been highlighted and exacerbated this week at Chris Hani Baragwanath Hospital. It's one of the biggest uh, hospitals uh, that we have in this country, providing um, many different health services to people from uh, across the country. It's not just here in Gauteng. I wonder if you can uh, explain to us and maybe tell us if you've had any success in getting your message across to governments. The CFO is saying that there is no financial crisis um, when it comes to uh, health here in the province uh, and that there's just uh, an issue of budget allocation. Uh, but that doesn't seem to be uh, the picture that we're getting from healthcare workers on the ground. Have you managed to speak to uh, Gauteng uh, Health, uh, the, the government uh, here in the province? What have they told you? So one of the main reasons that we embarked upon uh, the uh, uh, collective gathering on, on Thursday was to ask for us to have this exact kind of meeting that you're talking about, to be able to reflect to those who have the ability to shift budgets and to uh, appropriate budgets to try to get them the message. We felt very strongly that they need to walk around the hospital. They actually need to see what's going on on the ground. So on Friday, there was a significant number of meetings. But during those meetings, we as clinicians were not able to make representation. So I don't know um, what happened in those meetings and what conclusions uh, were reached. I do know that um, I think we all can appreciate to some extent budgetary constraints. But I think that it's about the, the approach where you look at everyone, every hospital as being the same is incorrect. I think you have to look at hospitals, you have to see what the activities are, and then you have to allocate the money according to those activities. And then you have to make sure that what you're measuring is, is equal. You can't uh, compare one hospital to another when one hospital has the ability to collect data that tells you what their, uh, what their uh, activities are, and then another hospital doesn't have staff to be able to do that. So it's, it's a really challenging environment where we're trying to get equity, where we feel we're not and haven't for years achieved the kind of uh, 
budgets that are appropriate to the work we do. So the impact for us on the ground is that we always feel disadvantaged. We feel we're historically disadvantaged. We feel like we've been treated like we, we're managing a disadvantaged communities and they remain disadvantaged because the health care that comes to them is not what it should be. Mm. I don't think communities are getting the kind of care that they should at Chris Arne Baragwanath Hospital. But having said that, I mean, I think it's a remarkable hospital with remarkable people working there. Passion and commitment, we're not short of at Barrow. We may be short of money, but passion and commitment, we're not. And so I think that under the very challenging circumstances, the absolute best that can be done is being done, but in our opinion, and my opinion, is not enough. More needs to be done. Certainly, and it's so profound what you're saying is that, uh, you know, you, you aren't treated properly, but it's the people that provide the best service possible to those that uh, come to Chris Heine Baragwanath Hospital. Just lastly, Professor, because I've actually run out of time, I want us to quickly speak about the kind of impact that, for example, Chris Heine Baragwanath Hospital is experiencing because Charlotte McClake, uh, some of the units are not operating and we're only expecting those uh, sections of the hospital to be back in operation only next year. This is, of course, causing a major impact uh, on uh, and pressure that you are facing at Chris Hani Baragwanath. And now you also have these budget constraints and uh, the reports of staff having to bring food in for the patients. Uh, it just paints such a, a, a devastating and depressing uh, image of our hospitals in the province. So... I have to begin by saying there's a lot that I'm proud of at Chris Arne Baragwanath Hospital and proud to have been associated with for many years. But you correct, the impact of the fire on our hospital, particularly our emergency services, and I can talk uh, intimately of the surgical services, our trauma services, as I indicated earlier, have been overburdened, but even our other surgical emergency services have been overburdened. And there can be little doubt that compared to pre-2019, what we're seeing now is just can only be explained by what's happening. We know that hospitals that usually refer to Charlotte are now referring to Barra, both their trauma, but also their non-trauma. And while the doctors at Charlotte are trying to do their best, the number of beds there have been cut and the number of beds are not going to go back to normal. And so it's fine having an emergency department, but if you have nowhere to put those patients, then the, the routine in this province is that you divert your hospital. And so we expect that this impact on our hospital will continue way beyond uh, when they say the emergency services are going to continue. And I don't think enough recognition has been given to that because it's hard to measure it. But I think that in our own emergency, certainly our trauma department, we're probably seeing 50% more severe injuries than we did uh, before Charlotte fire. Mm. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your insights. We really do appreciate it. And hopefully things will get better. I think it's so important for uh, government, not just here in the province, but nationally, to understand what's actually going on in our hospitals. That was Professor Martin Smith, who's the clinical head of surgery at Chris Han Hani Baragwanath Hospital.